to begin with i will go through the management of diabetes through the case based approach and uh, in this uh, journey we will be going through the various cases and you will learn that how to diagnose in your clinic without any investigations if you are not having the high and uh, laboratories or patient is not affording so through the five cases i will take you through the journey of uh, managing the juvenile and young diabetics connected connect, connect coming to your clinics so case one 10 year old girl typical presentation of polyuria polydipsia abdominal pain tiredness weight loss burning micturition hba1c is very high 10% no family history of diabetes on examination she was having bmi of 12.5 no markers of insulin resistance but dehydration was gross so what investigations you will do next next my dear friend definitely we will go for fasting pp ketones this is a typical case so ketones were positive and she was uh, uh, undergone the c peptide level which were very low 0.2 picomol and normal values more than 0.9 and depends upon the laboratory so the patient was having absent beta cell function and then gad antibody was done it was positive so this is a typical case of type 1 diabetes with ketosis or ketoacidosis whichever report shows so so we have discussed the 10 year old girl coming with typical complaints of dehydration and no family history bmi was very low and ketone was positive so she was having gad antibody positive and c peptide was very low and she was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes with ketosis so this is a typical case which we follow in our clinics and but what mistake we are doing we are labeling every young patient with uh, type 1 diabetes and insulin is being started so she was managed on proper hydration insulin infusion and the, gradually the ketones were taken away and then the patient was shifted to subcutaneous multiple injections and her a1c came down to 7.4 in next visit and we know that insulin antibodies are very sensitive whether they are gad ia2 or insulin antibodies why we require this uh, uh, dictum that we uh, we are having a positivity or not that in the environmentally uh, patient who are prone for type 1 diabetes autoimmune reaction leads to immune dysfunction and ultimately they develop the beta cell dysfunction even the type 1 diabetes goes through the phase of pre diabetes that is immunological abnormalities are prevailing at that time ultimately the patient goes into the clinical diabetes but a few weeks or months of good news is there that they don't require insulin that is the honeymoon period and then the chronic phase goes down so this was a typical case which we follow now the case to 13 year old girl again the young girl coming to your clinic with 8 months history of diabetes bmi is 29 she was started directly on multiple doses of insulin injections but still she is not controlled and still she is not controlled but sugars are high hb1c is 9.2% on taking the family history and ketone ketone was absent and she was having strong family history in her parents so again the young girl but here the bmi is high so what you will suspect as we see she was also started on insulin because of her age so we did a pedigree chart this is a patient mother father is diabetic and in their uh, maternal paternal part also some of the parents were diabetic so the bmi is high and all the other parameters are normal but the acanthosis is positive on her neck so the signs of insulin resistance were positive beta cell function was done by c peptide it was 1.3 she she was showing preserved beta cell function the antibody was negative so what is your diagnosis in this patient so my dear friend it is early onset type 2 diabetes due to the obesity we are seeing these cases in our clinic every weekly because of the covid they have not done any activities and the obesity has gone up in the young age and they are developing type 2 diabetes so patient was managed on diet exercise insulin was withdrawn added on metformin glimepride but she was going into hypos so she glimepride was withdrawn and ultimately she controlled was well controlled on metformin alone so suspect a type 2 diabetic patient in any young patient also who is having strong family history of diabetes obesity acanthosis nigric and signs of insulin resistance and a fair to good beta cell function should be proven to start the metformin therapy so moving on to the third case thus again a young girl since the age of 13 years she was having diabetes she was again put on basal bolus therapy and presented with recurrent uti and vaginitis she had a strong family history of diabetes on the maternal side mother nani mausi 
and elder sister all are having diabetes so what is the clue here again the 16 year old girl coming to your clinic young girl started on basal bolus therapy please take the proper history what should be your next diagnosis history is very important pedigree charting here the this is the patient patient's sister is diabetic mother is diabetic mother's mother and sisters are diabetic so the maternal side pedigree chart showing the strong family history of diabetes the bmi of this patient is 20 other investigations are normal what next you will advise to her so my dear friend the c peptide was uh, seen it was normal fairly good beta cell function was seen in this patient and no pancreatic calcification was seen in the abdominal x ray so this is a case of monogenic diabetes with a history of three generations of positive family history in the maternal side how you will diagnose whether it is a moody or early type 2 diabetes or type 1 diabetes so moody patients are usually non obese acanthosis is not seen three generation uh, positivity will be seen and only secretory defect is there no insulin resistance and better response to sulfonylurea in contrast the type 2 diabetic patients are obese they are having signs of acanthosis digricans they are having signs of both insulin secretion and resistance and there is high prevalence in india and response better to metformin so this is a case which we are discussing on the third case is moody maturity onset diabetes of young it is a monogenic form of diabetes genetic testing is required and the most uh, common form is the hnf1 alpha gene moody 3 was seen in this patient genetic screening is needed which is very rarely available and she was previously on basal bolus therapy but shifted to glimipride metformin from hb1c 11.9 it came down to 7 in 2 uh, uh, to 3 years and she was uh, continued on glimipride or glibenclamide only so the features are typical this you have to check take care in your mind when you are dealing with a young diabetic please take the proper history proper pedigree charting should be made the terrestrial phagens clinical features for moody is mutation in a single gene non obese less than 25 years generations three generations are seen atosomal dominantly inherited no ketosis the treatment is usually not required in the mild fasting hyperglycemia moody 2 and they do not need insulin initially but later they may require so there are moody 5 is a syndromic part with renal cyst and agenesis syndrome market syndrome so these are the various moody types which we can see 1 5 4 6 3 2 and 11 so these are the basic uh, moody and hnf1 alpha moody 3 is the most common this is a gck glucokinase mutation it does not have any microvascular complications so they don't require any uh, treatment so my dear friend the third case was a moody you have to be vigilant for the pedigree charting the case four again a 20 year old boy detected to have diabetes in 6 month he is having severe weight loss since one year of 10 kg abdominal pain oily stools he comes to your clinic with sugars of 345 postprandial a1c of 12.8 you are worried you think that it is a type 1 diabetic and uh, or type 2 diabetic you have to diagnose but it is a 20 year old but in the village he was taking the ohs triple drug combination but still he was on 12.8 a1c what should we do or what should we think so my dear friend in this patient ketone was absent c peptide was borderline low poor beta cell function was there and bmi was very less so what is the next step to diagnose this patient we have done abdominal x ray it showed large multiple pancreatic calculi at the t12 l1 level and he was diagnosed with fcpd fibrocalcific pancreatic diabetes he was started on basal bolus therapy pancreatic enzymes were given a1c came down to 7.8 in 3 months his weight gained uh, gradually this is a typical patient who is uh, seen in the <coughs> pancreatic diabetes in the central part certain parts of india and this is the picture which we are seeing and the patients are having the from the tropical country evidence of chronic pancreatitis should be present like calculi recurrent abdominal pain since childhood steatorrhea abnormal pancreatic function tests but the other causes of chronic pancreatitis should be ruled out that is alcoholism and hepatobiliary diseases so why it is important to diagnose my dear friend because we can give him a second life he will be uh, 
have feeling happy and with his quality of life will improve with basal bolus or any other insulin therapy the plain x ray shows multiple pancreatic calculi if you can see here and it is mostly found in kerala and tamil nadu states etiology is still unknown why we should be vigilant because it can cause pancreatic carcinoma so this uh, was a fourth case of fcpd again young guy now 32 year old male presenting with three p's a1c is high acanthosis is present gad antibody is present islet cell antibody is present my dear friends now we are confused type 1 and type 2 both pictures are coming in the same patient so what you will think so this is a case of lada mixture of type 1 and type 2 that's why it is known as latent autoimmune diabetes of adult or 1.5 positive for at least one of the auto antibodies associated with type 1 diabetes age of onset but you have to think it is mostly about 30 years it is they are usually free from insulin for the first 6 months to years but they gradually require insulin because they have the poor beta cell function so this is a phenotypic type 2 but genetically or immunologically it is type 1 so phenotypically type 2 and immunologically type 1 is known as lada or 1.5 or hybrid diabetes or double diabetes many names are there so it is a hybrid of type 1 genetically and type 2 phenotypically you can see the acanthosis in this patient initially patient of lada are controlled on metformin or sulfonylurea may be added but gradually they require insulin as the beta cell reserve is low so this is a uh, simple chart which you should keep in your clinic and the patient young coming to your clinic and for family you have to take the family history and if it is positive or if the ketone is negative <clears throat> you have to follow the three, two things where first you take the history of uh, diabetes if they are positive in the three generations the ketinuria uh, if it is positive in the three generation ketone will be absent no acanthosis will be seen so this is moody if the three generation history is negative and the patient is obese or having the signs of insulin resistance c peptide is good it is early onset type 2 diabetes due to obesity moving on the right side the, if the ketone is negative or positive if the ketone is positive you have to think of Uh, type one diabetes, the C peptide should be done. It will show absent C peptide or less. And auto antibody negative is known as idiopathic type one. Auto antibody positive type one is known as autoimmune type one diabetes. So ketone positive definitely our mind goes towards type one diabetes. If it is negative and you do the C peptide, it is poor reserve. Go for abdominal X-ray. Take the patient's history of recurrent stools, oily stools, abdominal pain. You. think of the x-ray and it is showing the pancreatic calculi it is fcpd so this simple chart you should keep in your clinic and diagnose your patient easily in your clinic whether it is type 1 type 2 moody lada so my dear friend we have discussed this is a 9 year old 12 year old 15 20 32 year old and all were having the high a1c so this was a type 1 this is a type 2 this is a moody fcpd and lada so uh, in the nutshell what we have learned today from the typical type 1 diabetic to the lada patient that don't fix your gauge to the type 1 diabetic only in young population you can have moody patients or lada patients or nowadays we are facing with the obese youngsters at 12 to 13 years i am having type 2 diabetic patients in my clinic so think of <clears throat> out of the box of type 1 diabetes follow the protocol take the proper history of family take make the pedigree chart and go for the basic test first you can diagnose these young and juvenile diabetics with proper and uh, in the right direction to give them the right treatment thank you thanks a lot for patient here